Hey everyone, Shaver1000 here. Hey everyone, Monkey1000. <laughs> so, no fancy intros or anything. Not that my intros are fancy anyway, but I got butter on me from our last video. Yep. So, if you guys watched my camping video, I know it was a long video, but some of you guys like them long form. I do. I know when I'm watching camping video, I like them to be at least an hour. Yeah. You know. Um, I like to see what gear people are using, stuff like that. But anyway, I, I mentioned in there that, you know, we had to leave Monday. And, well, I had a doctor's appointment Monday at 9 something. So... And I mentioned rescheduling it. Well, I did. <laughs> well, she did for me. But, right. yeah, we rescheduled <laughs> it. For Wednesday. So, we got there. And, uh, so, I went, what, one week and then the next week I had to have two different tests. Right. They did an ultrasound on my heart. And then they did one up here on my carotid arteries. Right. And my heart, I've got an irregular heartbeat, but I've had that for years. But what what concerned them is, I've, I've got blockage in both of them, but the right one's better than the left one. Right. So, she said we probably won't have to worry about that for a couple more years yet. But the left one needs to be taken care of. So i got to go in and get a CAT scan to make sure that the ultrasound is right. But they found they went up a little higher than what my other doctors did. Right. And they found some blockages. And it's if it's 70 to 80%, then they're going to have to do surgery. Right. So, but um, they said they could put a stent in. But the good thing, good news for me is if they said, she said that if they usually only put stints in if they only expect you to live around 10 years longer. Yeah, because so, they only last 10 years. So. Yeah, so she's, so to me that was kind of good news because they're, you know, foreseeing I'm going to live a lot longer than 10 years. She said, oh yeah, I, you know, you got a lot longer than 10 years left in you. So mm -hmm. they want to do the surgery now. It's my decision. I can do either or, but. You know, I'll take the surgery, <clears throat> but yeah, so far so it's blocked and it's really swollen. So mm -hmm. they said it's a silent issue, right? Which is one of the silent things. If it blocks up too bad, and then, and and that's what operates. And my left side operates my right side. Right. Okay. So and. You know, she was telling me some of the signs. If you get these signs, you know, get to the hospital immediately. They're, they're really concerned about that. And I'm like, well, how do I know? Because, you know, I've got these, you know. Numbness. I've got numbness anyway and stuff. She said, well, you'll know if it gets too bad. You'll you'll know it. She said, you, you'll think you're having another stroke. And, which could throw me into a stroke or cardiac arrest. Right. So, but right. that's the update. So... I'm probably going to have to have surgery. Mm-hmm. And tell them what else they found. Oh, yeah. This is... This is interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't have an aneurysm. I have two. <laughs> yes. He has two aneurysms. I have two. <laughs> yeah. Not only do I have one that's... It's a perforation... Of the hole in my heart. That's why they can't patch it. That's why I'm, done, you know, right. there's nothing they can do on that except just I take my blood thinners every day the rest of my life and I should be all right as long as I don't over exert myself and stuff. Right. So, um, but they found another one. And where is <laughs> Yay it? Yay me! I'm telling. It's above your heart. Yeah. So when they did the test. They usually, most doctors just go up so high. They don't go all the way up. I this, just, yeah, yeah, just told this them they time went up higher. They went up higher, yeah. So that's, that's kind of what, that's what's... How they found it. ...causing my blockage is because of that aneurysm. Yeah. And she said it looked like it had been there for a long time. Yeah. So, um, 
So that's what's also causing the blockage. So when, when they didn't go in and do the surgery and unblock it and everything, that aneurysm should be taken care of, but I could still never work again because the main issue's still there. Right, and it'll always be there. It'll always be there, mm -hmm. so. And I explained to her, I'm like, look, I don't want to die, but I don't want to die in the bedroom watching TV. Right. You know, I mean, if I'm going to go, I'm going to go whether it's my time or not. I don't want to hurry it up. But then again, you know, I mean, <clears throat> like a lot of people say, yeah, but you'll live longer. Yeah, but I might be alive longer, but am I really living? Right. You know, if I'm not turning a ranch or building a fire or setting up a tent or, you know, There's boating or casting out a line. Yeah. And enjoying it. <clears throat> you know, I mean, to me, that's living. Right. I mean... You know, would I rather live 30 years sitting in a bedroom watching TV or would I rather live 20 years being able to go enjoy myself? Yeah. I want to enjoy myself. Mm -hmm. And she said that's understandable, you know, but... Um, With a reason. <laughs> she said that's understandable, but mm -hmm. I still have limitations, you know. I'm like, well, they told me five, not to live five pounds, and I told her about, you know... Because she was like, well, that's about right. And I said, well, what about lifting a 62-pound transfer case up underneath the Chevy? She was like, I'm supposed to do that. <laughs> no. She said, I don't, I don't want to see you lift 40 pounds, especially yeah. on your back. <laughs> yeah, and he did that when he fixed the car, so. I had no choice, you know. I had no choice. And, and why am I going to pay somebody $1,000 to do something I can do? And I know when I do it, it's done right. Right. I you understand. Know? But. We have to be careful, that's all. But that's the update, so I'll let you know. I have to, they're supposed to call us about the CAT scan. And what the CAT scan is going to do is just confirm what the ultrasound, what you know. And, and, it, and it's more precise. It'll pretty much tell them exactly how much, like, you know. She knows I'm pretty much within a 70 to 80% blockage. Mm-hmm. But this CAT scan can like be like 78 or 77 percent. You know, it's right. really accurate. So. But they just want to make sure that you know the ultrasound's right, mm -hmm. which you, she said that's you know usually it's pretty much on the money. So yeah, yeah. So I'll keep you guys posted on that. So I got to go to the end of next month, um, July 27th or something. Yeah, back to see her. And then. That's after I see the ultrasound, then we can go from there on. Right. Because they want to get it done pretty pretty quick. Yeah, I figure figure soon after if it's correct. Then yeah, because be yeah, because she said it's it's she said it's it's a little concerning. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So she wants to get it taken care of right away. Because she said in any tingling, any numbness that is not what you normally feel. Go to hospital immediately. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they're real concerned about that. Um, yeah, she said. Uh, but the procedure itself, you'll be in the hospital for one night and you'll go home the next day. Yeah, they have to uh, monitor me just because I'm on blood thinners. Mm -hmm. So I have to spend the night. Right. Normally, if like I wasn't on blood thinners or something, she said sometimes they'll send you home that day, but she said in your case, especially as rare as your case is, you'll be in there one night. Mm -hmm. She said you'll go in, you'll have your procedure done, and you'll be out the next day providing everything goes great. Right. Goes good. Right. So then I'm thinking, wow, cool. Two days off. No. <laughs> She's like, you know, you're going to have to take it easy for four to six weeks after that. Let me tell you something. The day I got out of the hospital on my, my stroke. I know. I, I didn't come to the house. No, you didn't. I got in her dad's truck. Walked out of the hospital. Got in the truck. Boom, boom. Took off and headed down the road. Put an alternator on her truck. Yes. Laying on the ground. <laughs> the day I got out of the hospital. Yeah. Didn't even, did. didn't even come home. Left the hospital and went and put an alternator on her truck. On the Toyota, so yep. yeah. Here. Uh huh? Okay. Yep, that's what you did. Had to be done. My niece and her husband at the time, 
<laughs> they bless their hearts they were trying they just couldn't get it no mm -hmm. <laughs> and i got out there and five minutes it's done yeah yeah but we were going down the road <laughs> No. She's like, when'd you get out of the hospital? She said, he just left. She goes, what? Yeah, he hasn't been home yet. Because <laughs> <laughs> she left them to come and get me. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was getting out. Yeah. So, yes, we had her dad's truck, you know. My goodness. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> she said, well, I got to go get him. I think he's going to drop him off the house or something. That didn't happen. She's like, when did you get out? I, said, I don't know how long it took to get from there to here. <laughs> I haven't been home yet. Yeah. You idiot! <laughs> My niece, you got to love her. She loves her Uncle Marty. Yeah. <laughs> if you didn't just get out of the hospital, I'd put you right back in. <laughs> We would have figured it out. I was starting to get dark. I'm like, yeah, let's just go. I'll throw it on there and <laughs> we'll get it on. <laughs> well, we made you come home. Because it broke now. down on her. Yeah. yeah. I was almost sweating. Uh, and I'm in the hospital, so there wasn't anything I could do. So thank God the company, she got it into where this company was or somebody helped you push it in or whatever. Yeah, it was a, it was a company where I was kind of in their driveway. <laughs> <laughs> and but he, they come out to help me. and pushed her because she had to kind of coast in because mm -hmm. if you don't know, I mean, you know, you're, if your alternator goes bad, you're running on battery and your battery's only going to run so long, especially when she's running air and right. music and charging her phone. She's at work, you know, and driving around and stuff. And finally the battery just said the heck with them and done. Mm -hmm. So the battery went dead, you know, cause she was running, you know, you got your fuel pump, turn signals and brake lights and you know, so, yeah, your battery's going to run down. That's what happened, and they come out, and they helped her <laughs> push it out of the way for where it was nice and safe, and they said, it'll be fine. Just, yeah. you know, it'll be fine there. Don't worry about it. It won't get towed. Mm -hmm. We know it's here. It'll be it'll be safe. Yeah. It was almost in Leesburg. Yeah, it was. Well, technically mm -hmm. it was Leesburg. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was quite a ways away. <laughs> Yep. I'm like, man, I've got to get that done. <laughs> so, oh, good story time for you there. But anyway, so I'll keep you guys posted on that and um, go from there. Yep. It's it's not a real dangerous surgery, but they do have to cut my neck open. So. It's dangerous for you because of your condition. Well, because of my condition, yeah, but it's still not like, you know. No. It's not a 50-50 chance, I mean. Chances are I'm gonna be all right. <laughs> it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, unless you know the doctors in there, I mean that's your carotid. You know, it's my carotid arteries. <laughs> that's you. Whoops. <laughs> Who sneezed? <laughs> we got a bleeder. We got a bleeder. So, yeah, she'll be rich. And I'll just be resting. I'll take you with me. Shut up. But that's that. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. We'll see you in the next one, Mung. Mike says she's out for now. <laughs> Bye, y'all. I Bye. think that was enough. <laughs> Bye, guys. Oh, we get to put Uncle Sam up. Yep. Uncle Sam gets to come out. Yeah. Of its closet. Yeah. Oh, we got uh, the shower people. Yes. That box behind coming, you there. Coming. Monday. Um, yeah, Monday. At be 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, and then we got the inspector coming Tuesday. For the roof. And the windows. He didn't say windows. He just said the roof. Oh. Yeah. I don't know if they have separate. Anyway, windows. I thought they was going to inspect everything when it was done. But I did, too. I don't know. Anyway, so that's going to be started on Monday. It's going to take a week, so. Mm-hmm. We'll be using clothespins. Nuh-uh. Hmm. Bullshit. You'll be stinky. No, I will not be stinky because, you know what, there's still water. <laughs> there's water. You can get water. There's no excuse for that. <laughs> no. Nobody's going to be stinking in this house. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. We can't use the shower for a whole week. No, but we can use our water for a whole oh, week. Oh, yeah. We'll have enough So, there. trust me, there will be no stinking going. If I smell one little thing, if somebody farts wrong, they're going outside for a few hours. Bye. It was you in the tent that night. It was not. <laughs> it was not me. It was her. It was not. He blames the dog all the time, too. Oh, my goodness. Poor dog. <laughs> Bruno gets mad. He'll yeah, do this. he does. <laughs> He huffs and puffs like a little kid who goes, yeah. and he'll look at me and give me this dirty look and then get down and go in his tent for a while. He gets mad. Yeah, he does. He sure does. He's it's got a funny. personality. That dog is something else, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's got quite a personality. <laughs> That's funny. In, in my video, in the review of the tent, mm -hmm. I'm doing something there, and he just comes strolling in, and if you listen real close, you hear her go, and then he stops, turns, and walks back out. I, was trying I to didn't even know because he was behind ass. me. I didn't know he was in my shot. Yeah, I was trying to keep But I left that ass. in there because I just thought that was cute. He's just moseying along, and you hear this little voice, Come here. Come here. <laughs> He's something else, aren't you, bud? Yeah. Yeah, see? <laughs> I interrupted him. Mm -hmm. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Shea Barely Met the Man of Legend. Gone for now. I just thought maybe you might want to hear the update. So. Yep. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Is that all you got, Monk? Or? That's it. I was like, oh, I do have Timo, but uh, it's not coming until next week. Oh, what a shame. I know. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to check out Monkey 1000 channel, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys. Take care. Bye, you. <laughs> Bye.